हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड टाइम टू ऑल आई एम चंदन कुमार प्रधान वेलकम टू यूट्यूब चैनल चंदन फिजिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑल अबाउट मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशंस लेट्स एगेन मैक्सवेल्स इक्वेशंस आर द फंडामेंटल इक्वेशंस टू डिस्क्राइब ऑल द फिनोमिनस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक थ्योरी Maxwell compile the equations derived by Gauss, Faraday, and Ampere regarding electromagnetism. According to Maxwell, he proposed four equations to describe the properties of electromagnetic waves and various phenomena related to electromagnetic theory maxwell's equations in differential form grad that d is equal to rho grad that b is equal to 0 grad plus e is equal to minus del b by del t grad cos s is equal to j plus del d by del t this is the divergence these two are the curl divergence of d is equal to rho divergence of b is equal to 0 curl of e and curl of s at the same time the integral form of these equations integration over that of closed surface d dot uh, ds is equal to rho dv over volume integral b dot ds over that of closed surface is equal to 0 e dot dl in that of uh, line integral is equal to minus del by del t of surface integral of b dot ds next s dot dl over that of line integral is equal to surface integral j plus del d by del t of ds that first equation he compiled by using gauss law in electrostatics second equation by using gauss law in magnetostatics third equation by using faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and fourth equation in that of uh, fourth equation proposed by maxwell he just modified that thing to that of ampere circuital law that's why it uh, it's uh, known as maxwell's modification of ampere's law throughout that of four equations the direct contribution of maxwell to that of fourth equation basically that term the idea of displacement current was proposed by the scientist james clark maxwell and another three equations are just a compilation by maxwell by using various laws proposed by various scientists related to electricity and magnetism in these equations the terms d stands for electric displacement vector rho stands for charge density b magnetic induction e electric field intensity s magnetic field intensity now we can derive all these uh, four equations in the form of differential as well as integral form we have to use the fundamental identity of vectors and the properties of vector identity in that uh, derivation section we basically use these two theorems one is gauss divergence theorem 
another one is stokes theorem by using gauss divergence theorem we can convert surface integral to that of volume integral that is if a vector a dot ds over that of closed surface s then it is changed to that of volume integral as grad dot a over that of volume next stokes theorem is used to convert line integral into that of surface integral if a vector a along that of closed line c so a dot dl along that of closed curve c is changed to that surface integral grad cross a net ds okay i have uh, a suggestion to you to understand uh, very clearly the topic named as electromagnetic theory you have to refer the mathematical physics section as uh, vector algebra basically vector identity with uh, the concept of gradient divergence call and uh, so many theorems like that of uh, gauss divergence theorem stokes theorem green's theorem and so on and uh, the core subject named as electricity and magnetism basic concept of electricity and magnetism to refer you have to refer this to mathematical physics named as vector algebra and basic concept related to electricity and magnetism then uh, you can easily understood that the topic named as electromagnetic theory okay come to our top discussion how we can derive maxwell's equations derivations maxwell's first equation both differential and integral form we have to derive let us uh, consider a surface s and that the surface s bounding a volume v in a dielectric medium if we consider that is a dielectric medium its volume v and that uh, surface s which is placed in an electric field and that is placed in an electric field e so the polarization of the dielectric produces bound charges with that bound charge density rho p in addition if the region contains the free charges of free charge density rho since we apply electric field to that of dielectric and that uh, dielectric having that volume v with that of surface s through that of surface s electric field propagates due to that of electric field inside that of dielectric it produces bound charges as well as free charges due to the process of polarization if that uh, total charges uh, is uh, the combination of bound charges plus free charges if we choose uh, the charge density of these bound charges as rho p and charge density of uh, these free charges as rho then we can use gauss law according to gauss law the total flux the total flux that is e dot ds over that of closed surface s is equal to 1 by epsilon times of the charge enclosed that charge enclosed we taken as bound charges as well as free charges in that of volume v therefore the charge density is free charge density plus bound charge density rho p over that of volume dv volume integral v okay or e vector 
as we know E vector is equal to sorry now that epsilon naught is multiplied to that of E vector closed surface integration epsilon naught E dot D s is equal to rho plus rho p d v or here epsilon naught e which is equal to first uh, we have to separate the terms integration epsilon naught e dot d s volume integration rho d v plus volume integration rho p d v let me prefer rho p and is bound charge bound charge density is related to that of polarization vector bound charge density grad dot p where uh, p is the polarization vector polarization vector or now that the surface integral can be changed to that the volume integral by using gauss divergence theorem as in that of node section i first mentioned surface integral can be changed to volume integral by using gauss divergence theorem surface integral can be changed to volume integral grad dot epsilon not e d v is equal to rho d v in place of rho p minus grad dot p minus grad dot p d v that term to this side or v grad dot epsilon e d v plus grad dot p d v is equal to volume integral rho d v from this two integrals grad dot epsilon e plus p d v is equal to integration over rho d v that term epsilon e plus polarization vector is equal to d vector which is the electric displacement vector electric displacement vector therefore volume integral grad dot d 
is equal to volume integral rho d v. Since uh, that uh, equation is the true for all volumes, then uh, the volumes on that of uh, both sides must be 0. First we separate it as volume grad that d minus rho over that of uh, v is equal to 0. Therefore, grad dot d minus rho is equal to 0 or grad dot d is equal to rho. This is the Maxwell's first equation in differential form. Now, we can uh, convert uh, it uh, to that of uh, integral form by using the integration over an arbitrary volume integrating over an arbitrary volume V, we get arbitrary volume grad dot d d V is equal to V rho d V. Again, that uh, volume integral can be sensed to that surface integral d dot d s is equal to rho d v which one is Maxwell's first equation in integral form. Anyone can uh, say in that uh, point uh, that uh, surface integral equal to that of volume integral of rho d v, but uh, after deriving that uh, differential form, we can integrate it in to get that integral form of Maxwell's equation. It is easy to us to derive integral form by using differential form of Maxwell's equation. Next, derivation of Maxwell's second equation. Maxwell's second equation that is from Gauss law in magnetostatics. From the experiment, it is known that magnetic monopoles do not exist. Hence, the magnetic lines of force are closed curves that is the number of magnetic lines of force entering any arbitrary closed surface is exactly the same as leaving it. Therefore, the flux of magnetic induction B across any closed surface is always 0. If we, if we consider uh, bar magnet north pole and uh, south pole, these are the magnetic uh, lines of forces from north pole to south pole if we consider uh, a surface like this then the magnetic lines of force entering to that of surface is same as that of magnetic lines of force exist from that of surface. In technicality, the flux of magnetic induction across any closed surface is always 0. That it is a B dot d s 
in that of closed surface is equal to 0. Again, that the surface integral can be changed to that of volume integral by using Gauss divergence theorem. Volume integral grad dot b dv is equal to 0. As we say, the surface bounding the volume is arbitrary, then the inti integral uh, can be vanished. Therefore, grad dot b is equal to 0. The Maxwell's second equation in differential form. Next, its integral form simply from that of differential equation we can easily get just its reverse way integrating over an arbitrary volume grad dot b dv is equal to 0. Similarly, by using Gauss divergence theorem that the volume integral can be changed to the surface integral that is surface integral b dot ds is equal to 0. That one is Maxwell's second equation in integral form. Next, Maxwell's third equation. From Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, it is known that the induced EMF in any closed loop or a circuit is equal to the rate of uh, change of magnetic flux linked by that loop or circuit. Mathematically, we can say the induced EMF is equal to d phi by dt, the rate of change of magnetic flux d phi by dt. Phi negative sign is used that the negative sign indicates that the EMF induced in that of circuit opposes the change in magnetic flux produced by it. It is a law proposed by the scientist Lenz. According to him, it is Lenz's law. So, E is equal to minus d by dt magnetic flux definition of magnetic flux as surface integral of b dot ds or e is equal to minus surface integral del b del d ds. Here we consider that surface is fixed, surface s is fixed and uh, that uh, magnetic uh, field b changes with time, it is del b by del d due to that change we obtain magnetic flux sorry due to that change we obtain that induced emf again the relation of induced emf induced emf e closed line integral 
of that of electric field E dot D L. That one equation number one, this one equation number two. Why E is equal to closed Cobb integration E dot D L. If we take an E vector is the induced electric field around a circuit or loop due to that uh, change in magnetic flux, then from that of definition of induced EMF, it is the amount of work done in moving a unit charge around that of closed loop. Therefore, E is equal to closed curve integration over that of E dot DL which one is the line integral d l the small element of that of circuit or loop from equation 1 and 2 from equation 1 and 2 line integral e dot d l is equal to minus surface integral del b by del t ds here e is equal to that much e is equal to this one. Now, that line integral can change to that of surface integral by using Stokes theorem initially in that of node section I clarify by using Stokes theorem we can convert line integral to that of surface integral, surface integral grad cross E d s is equal to minus del B del T at d s or that term to this side s grad cross E plus del B by del T d s is equal to 0. As we choose that the surface is arbitrary, the integrand must vanish. So, grad cross E plus del b by del t is equal to 0 therefore, grad cross E is equal to minus del b by del t Maxwell's third equation in differential form by using that differential form we can easily derive the integral form integrating over a surface S that uh, surface S is bounded by a curve C. surface integral grad plus e that d s is equal to surface integral del b by del t that d s surface integral grad plus e that d s minus del by del t surface integral b dot d s that a surface integral can change to the line integral by using Stokes theorem that is closed line integral c e 
dot dl is equal to minus del by del t integration b dot ds that one is maxwell's third equation in integral form next maxwell's fourth equation it can be proved from that of ampere circuit law from ampere circuit law it is known that the line integral of the magnetic induction b around a closed path is equal to mu naught times the total current includes by that of path mathematically we can say the line integral over a closed path is equal to mu naught times current enclosed by that of path in current expression in terms of current density current density current per surface area so current in terms of current density as j dot ds in the top surface area j current density in that expression in place of current we substitute current density and again b again b relates as mu naught into h therefore closed cob integration mu naught h dot dl is equal to mu naught in place of i surface integral j dot ds from both sides mu naught mu naught cancel out closed curve integration over c h dot dl is equal to surface integral j dot ds now that the surface integral can changed sorry that the line integral can be changed to that of surface integral by using stokes theorem therefore stokes theorem is used grad cross s ds surface that line integral change to surface integral is equal to surface integral j dot ds or that term this side grad cross s minus j over ds is equal to 0 as that surface is chosen arbitrarily then that integrand vanished therefore grad cross s minus j is equal to 0 or grad cross s is equal to j that equation was suggested by ampere and that equation that uh, equation holds good for steady state current steady state current means 
when current uh, does not varying with time which is called steady state that steady state current uh, holds good for that expression it was provided by ampere but it's not uh, hold good in case of varying current how let us see from the equation of continuity in that of uh, equation divergence taking on both sides equation 1 taking divergence taking divergence on both sides So, grad dot grad cross S is equal to grad dot J grad dot grad cross S that one is 0 is equal to grad dot J as we know from equation of continuity from equation of continuity grad dot j plus del rho by del t is equal to 0 here in place of grad dot j we can substitute minus del rho by del t therefore j is equal to minus del rho by del t or del rho by del t is equal to 0 means rho is equal to constant rho is equal to constant which indicates the charge density the charge density is static So, that uh, equation proposed by Ampere regarding static charge holds good, but uh, when we are uh, dealing with dynamic state of current then uh, that uh, does not hold good. At that time Maxwell just changed that equation to a new form by introducing the concept of displacement current. According to him, Ampere's modified, sorry, Maxwell modified, modified the above equation as for dynamic state of current. means for time varying current that one is grad cross s is equal to j plus j d the new term J D which is the displacement current density displacement current density
now taking the divergence therefore taking the divergence grad dot grad cross h here we obtain that is grad dot j plus grad dot j d that term is 0 here is grad dot j plus grad dot j d or grad dot uh, j d is equal to minus of grad dot j grad dot j as minus grad dot j minus del rho by del t that one is minus of minus del rho by del t from that equation of continuity therefore grad dot uh, z d is equal to del by del t in place of rho we write that is grad dot d rho is equal to grad dot d this is the Maxwell's first equation therefore grad dot j d is equal to grad dot del d by del t therefore j d is equal to del d by del t ok therefore in place of j d we write that one therefore grad cross s is equal to j plus place of j d del d by del t that is the maxwell's fourth equation in differential form similarly we can easily derive the integral form by integrating it integrating over a surface s that surface s is bounded by the loop c grad cross h surface integral surface integral of j plus del t ds now that uh, surface integral can change to that of line integral by taking stokes theorem therefore it's the line integral is dot dl over that of closed loop c is equal to surface integral j plus del d del t ds this one is the maxwell's fourth equation in integral form therefore with the help of this video lecture we understand the concept of maxwell's equations in differential form integral form the terms as their usual meaning a note what is gauss divergence theorem and stokes theorem then derive one by one derivation maxwell's first equation 
this is the differential form integral form Maxwell's second equation differential form integral form Maxwell's third equation differential form integral form finally Maxwell's fourth equation this is the differential form that one is the integral form so it is useful and informative notes let me wind up the session thank you